you doing, Fusion fans? Dr. Matthew Moynihan here. I'm uh, heading on my way to the airport to meet Tanner Horn, who has developed a superconducting spindle cusp out in Denver, Colorado. So I'm making this little film so that y'all can come along and check it out with me. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, guys, uh, I'm here in, at, uh, with Tanner Horn. Hello. And Tanner Horn's going to describe uh, this chamber and uh, his, his approach to fusion. So this is our second generation device, uh -huh. and I'm scaling up what's called a spindle cusp, and we're going to do a large set of experiments here to narrow down the parameters to make fusion possible. Okay, let's go look at this poster here. The spindle cusp is created by putting two of the same poles facing one another. In the center, there's a zone of no magnetic field. At the heart of the spindle cusp concept is the idea that the plasma's own magnetic properties would reject the outside field. This is experimental at best, and in fact may never work. There are two other experimental fusion approaches that attempt to use spindle cusps as their main method of trapping plasma. One is the polywell, and the other is the compact fusion reactor from Lockheed Martin. Lockheed made waves in 2014 when they announced that they were working on an experimental concept for a fusion reactor. Fifty years ago, when people were super excited about nuclear power, we tried to put it on everything, including airplanes. There were some big operational issues that wasn't safe. Fusion is a much safer option. A next generation of airplanes that doesn't rely on fuel and can just stay aloft, unlimited range, unlimited endurance. That's what nuclear fusion can do for an airplane. So, uh, magnetic uh, spindle cusp has been looked at for a long time. And basically, you take two magnetic coils shown in red here, and they're basically opposing. And you make a null in the center. And in this configuration, plasma wants to leak out the axis and along the equator. And the innovation here is, in past experiments, the, 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 the plasma was quiescent, it was stable, um, but you had really high particle losses out the radius. And the novel thing here is that you connect one radius to another. What we are relying on is being able to engineer the, the, the behavior of the plasma so that it actually behaves in a diamagnetic fashion and that it actually um, achieves the shielding uh, performance that has been demonstrated experimentally, but in this new configuration. And that, that is a big question. I He's not kidding when he says that's a big question mark. In fact, it's a gamble. If spindle cusps work as advertised, then they will pay off big, because trapping plasma is a huge problem in fusion research. If you find an efficient way to confine the plasma, it gets you pretty far down the road to an efficient fusion reactor. But if it doesn't work, It'll be a big waste of research dollars. This is your control system, and this is the setup that did it. Yep. And so this is actually this is the first generation device here. Uh, it's the first in the world to run superconducting magnets in this uh, high beta style confinement scheme. It's super cool. Can we look inside the big guy here? We can. So Cus confinement was first explored by Dr. Harold Grad at NYU in the 1950s and 60s. Dr. Grad used what computers were available to him to explore the behavior of plasma in these sharply bent fields. He discovered that there were two kinds of behavior. One was called adiabatic plasma, which would corkscrew its way along the edges of the trap. The other was non-adiabatic plasma, which would generally move in straight lines and occupy the middle where there was no magnetic field. Later, simulations and theory predicted that a surface current would form between the two regions, and this surface current would generate a magnetic pressure that could reject the outside field. Dr. Broussard called this the wiffle ball effect. This happens in plasma because 
In plasma, it's not a neutral matter. Electrons and ions are now free to move. When they move, they generate the current. When they generate the current, the direction of their current is try to cancel out the magnetic field that was imposed onto them. So that's the word diamagnetism comes about. More plasma you have, this diamagnetic effect becomes stronger and stronger until you can cancel out all your magnetic field in the system. So what we were looking at is, with increasing plasma pressure, the polywell dynamics will change dramatically due to this effect. However, the effect has only really been seen in a limited number of simulations and experiments, nothing that would be considered a definitive body of work. We don't really have extensive experimental experience with this effect, and even if we did, we're not sure that it would matter very much. It may not be a strong enough effect to really help us. The funding for this research has not been present. These concepts are considered alternatives because they are not tokamaks or laser fusion. There are other alternative fusion concepts. Cus confinement is not the only one, and each approach has a strength and a weakness, and most have not been fully explored. It's been difficult in the U.S. to make the case to policy leaders of fusion's potential impact on the military and economic might of the United States. One country that has taken notice is China, which has recently offered awards and held conferences, inviting fusion researchers from the United States over to discuss their research. And if the U.S. is not careful, it will lose its critical edge in these key areas, which may very well be the key to fusion power. And fusion power may very well be the most important technology of the next 250 years. So this is your pumping system. Yep, so this chamber is unique and we can adapt it uh, any way we need to with any style of different pumps. Right now, uh, just for testing, we've got dual turbos. It'll have dual roughing pumps, dual turbos, and a uh, custom-built cryo pump, yeah. which will be in this whole cylinder here. Um, it's cool. The liquid nitrogen here? Yep, the liquid nitrogen will run the cryo pump. Okay. And we'll do neutron uh, counts, basically, is what we're, gonna, we're going for here. All right, so uh, let me ask you this. Um, um, you, once you get all the system up and running, you want to explore the space, essentially. Mm -hmm. right? And you want to try to map out um, power in versus fusion yep. rate. Yeah, so efficiency is really what we're going for. Um, and there hasn't been a lot of work into just the parameters, optimizing the parameter space for us.